Neogen's Listeria right now is a complete system for taking environmental Listeria tests with molecular level accuracy. The test requires no enrichment and features a total timed result of under one hour. The system is composed of an isothermal amplification system and reader with 16 wells. It comes with a laptop computer and data reporting software and two heat blocks. The Listeria Right Now kit comes complete for 96 samples and includes an environmental swab for sample collection, the lysis buffer components, and the answer reagents with an internal positive control. The assay features a very simple procedure. Let's take a look. Before beginning sampling, reconstitute one vial of lyophilized lysis reagent with 18 milliliters of lysis reagent suspension buffer by adding the buffer to the reagent vial. The buffer solution can be reused for up to 30 days when stored under refrigeration at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Set the first heating block at 37 degrees Celsius and the second at 80 degrees. Verify the temperature with the calibrated thermometers provided with heat block systems. When you're ready to start your sampling, remove the swab from its container. Decant the neutralizing buffer from the tube into a receptacle and place the swab back into the container. Sample a 4 inch by 4 inch surface. After sampling, the swab can be returned to the tube and held for up to 24 hours. Pipette 1 milliliter of the lysis buffer into an Eppendorf tube. Remove the swab and dip it completely into the buffer and express the sample. Vortex the tube for several seconds. Transfer 1 half milliliter of the solution to a cluster tube and incubate at 37 degrees for 10 minutes. Transfer the cluster tube to the second heating block and incubate for 20 minutes at 80 degrees. Tubes can be held in a heating block for up to one hour. Place the appropriate number of answer reagent tubes into the reader for at least three minutes. Remove and discard the caps. From the cluster tubes in the 80 degree heating block, transfer 50 microliters of the solution to the reaction tubes. Seal the tubes tight with a new cap from the kit. Vortex the tubes briefly to stir the mixture. Return the tubes to the reader, close the lid, and press start on the software screen to begin the reading. The assay will be complete in 18 minutes. As is the case with any molecular-based assay, it is very important that good laboratory practices are observed. These include cleaning the reader on a regular basis to prevent cross-contamination of amplicons, ensure that the heating blocks are set at and hold the appropriate temperature, measure the temperature with the thermometer, do not rely on the digital display of the heating equipment. Be sure to allow at least three minutes for the reaction tubes to warm to 56 degrees before use. This is facilitated by placing the reaction tubes into the answer reader prior to adding sample. Do not leave the samples in the 80 degree heating block for longer than one hour. Always dispose of the swabs, pipette tips, and reagent tubes by placing them directly into a 10% bleach solution. Always use new caps on the reagent tubes after adding the sample. Spent reagent tubes from completed reactions should not be autoclaved. The bleach solution used must be 10% household bleach and must be prepared fresh each day for use. An invalid result occurs when the positive control fails to react with the answer reagents and the expected fluorescence is not detected. This is an indication that the reaction chemistry may not have achieved its desired state. Normally this occurs because of the presence of an inhibiting substance within the reagent tube. The most common reasons why this can occur include swabbing a heavily soiled area. The assay is intended as a post-cleaning test. Failure to pre-warm the reaction tubes to 56 degrees prior to the addition of the sample. Waiting too long after the insertion of the sample into the reagent tubes before initiating the reading. It's important to begin the reading within 5 to 10 seconds after the addition of the sample. The temperature of the 80 degree heating block is too low or the time is too short. 
The Listeria Right Now system is able to detect very low numbers of Listeria species, including L. monocytogenes, from environmental samples without enrichment. It can do that because the system employs an isothermal amplified nucleic acid reaction to target ribosonal RNA. Within the reaction tubes, amplification occurs through a polymerization mechanism by a specific endonuclease. And detection occurs in real time using a fluorescent molecular beacon. Let's dive a little deeper into each of those concepts. Because the system targets ribosomal RNA, it starts with a significant advantage, since our RNA is present in much greater numbers within Listeria cells, typically between 1,000 and 10,000 copies of the target compared to only one copy for DNA. This can result in a 1,000 to 10,000 fold increase in target analyte concentration. The isothermal reaction within the reagent tubes produces a constant cycle of molecular replication, producing analyte copies much more quickly than traditional PCR reactions, which must run through a series of heating and cooling cycles for denaturing and replication to occur. So in summary, when you start with significantly more targets and utilize a significantly faster replication cycle, you end up with significantly faster results. Let's take a look at the isothermal replication process occurring within the reaction tubes. The process begins with the release of ribosomal RNA through the lysine procedure. A reverse transcription reaction occurs, converting ribosomal RNA into DNA. Within the reaction tubes, a special primer targets specific regions of the DNA and starts the amplification process. An endonuclease nicking enzyme cleaves the strand, releasing the first replicate. That replicate is then bound by a second primer elongated using a polymerase, and then cleaved by the nicking enzyme, producing replicate 2. Replicates 1 and 2 repeat the process rapidly and exponentially, creating millions of copies of the target. A special molecular beacon is part of the reagent mixture. If replicate 2 binds to the molecular beacon, a quencher and fluorophore physically separate, allowing the fluorescence to be detected by the answer instrument. The Listeria Right Now system has been validated on multiple surfaces including stainless steel, plastic, sealed concrete, and ceramic tile. It's also been validated to work in the presence of popular food safety sanitizers, including those listed on this chart. No interference from residual sanitizers has been observed with the Listeria Right Now assay. The assay has a theoretical level of detection of 2 CFUs per swab and a 95% confidence level of detection of 4 CFUs per swab for each of the species of Listeria, including L. monocytogenes. We recognize that Listeria right now represents a significant leap forward in the science of environmental Listeria diagnostics. But we think it's important to make sure that we all understand what the product can and can't do at this time. First, the product is not intended to totally replace your existing Listeria testing program. We see the product as complementing your existing program while providing greater flexibility and more of a search and destroy approach. The assay has not been validated on any product matrices and is not intended for product testing. It is also not intended for sampling heavily soiled environmental samples. For more information or to talk to a support technician, please call Neogen at 800-234-5333 or visit our website at foodsafety.neogen.com. Thank you.